are like these two parallel tracks. Guess which stand here is particularly popular? Uh, but uh, I thought, I thought um, you said the trick is, is some sort of clipping of the yes, value, yes, right? Yes. Clipping of the gradient. Yeah, and, but how does it relate to not using uh, contrastive, contrastive learning? Uh, so the contrastive learning, what is the contrastive learning? Basically... So for which uh, manifolds do you know that this, is, this already works very well? I'm going to ICML, uh, International Conference on Machine Learning, which happens to be in Vienna um, this week, next seven days. And I just spontaneously decided um, I might make some uh, uh, captions, some recordings. Maybe this can turn into some lighthearted video. I can already see. Um, a lot of Asians with backpacks and TikTok girls, which are not necessarily associated. Hey, sorry. Can I try this? <laughs> can, I try, can I try this out? You want to operate it? Yeah. It sounds very hot, but this is running on. Yeah, the cooling system is working. So. This uh, coffee stand is making big business here. The function at any discretization and the output is a function you can query at any point. Okay, I'm gonna go with the questions from the chat. Uh, first one is... Then see what changed, then accept. So it's too much work for a quick fix. Yesterday, right? Sunday was the first day. Uh, I only listened to one talk from beginning to end um, by Google. They talked about some internal copilot code correction ML tool. But then it turned out this tool, uh, I mean, this is pre-OpenAI GPT times, so I don't know if they, to what extent this has developed. Is they were basically talking about the past and then when somebody asked, is this going to be a product? They just said, no. <laughs> and um, so me, um, in the morning I listened to a talk on neural operators, right? I did this video on uh, neural tangent kernel, uh, I don't know, half a year ago or so. Uh, this was a little bit more basic, it was basically about neural networks where the input is a whole function and there was a bunch of emphasis on um, distances, metrics in um, function space um, and I don't know, it was it was sold as a little bit more revolutionary as I, than I would uh, say it was um, but uh, nonetheless interesting, very physics, close to physics um, talking about constraints, errors and how everything in this in this sort of paradigm is not really well developed um, and I will do some more for sort of theory laden as opposed to data and product um, results driven talks uh, mostly because I wanted to actually see some vision computer vision uh, talks but it seems this it's more heavily on the um, language model side here so there you go this is the Break report. There are like 300 posters in this session, and you have like 90 minutes. So, what does that mean? You have like under a minute per poster, you read the title. If you go somewhere and engage with the people, then you basically lose like, I don't know, 40 other posters that you could look at or read the title of. 
and then there is like how many poster sessions is a little bit over the top I'm just going to video some of those very fancy sounding titles Um, so, one, one uh, first question. So, you say uh, foundation models, but for what kind of uh, data inputs are, you, are we talking? Oh, this is just for images. Images. This is uh, for the image domain. We yeah. also have follow up on text, but it becomes a bit more complicated. So, yeah. in this one, we just touch so. images. You always uh, have like uh, regular grids like this? It's always like uh, square grids or? Oh, yes, yes. yes. Because I, I, wonder, I wonder if like scene understanding and image understanding. If you're not, if you cut out uh, parts, if that might not help, you know, I have a, di a different uh, grid on the image and, and cut out different tokens. Do you know if something like this exists? You maybe ask, uh, like, um, do you make what you're ne looking at next uh, dependent on who is asking for these tools? Like, wh who are you talking to, if any? Yeah, so I guess we're primarily trying to look at. Uh, so, I mean, there's a big effort to get AI to solve high and low level problems. Yeah. And so we're kind of looking at... Um, because Euclid is more like a natural language? Well, well Euclid doesn't prove... Like, he, well, yes, he has a logical system, but it's not uh, strictly formal the same way like... So we aim to directly predict the graph structure. Okay. So in order to do that, these are our methods. So I will briefly introduce them, but I will skip some mathematical details. So if you have any question, please feel free to ask. Yeah, me. I mean, it sounds to me like the one thing I would like to understand is how you go from <laughs> continuous to discrete, right? Ah, uh, yes, um, but yes. Uh, the feedback is 57 kilograms. Uh, you know, it's your total point cloud. And to see. And here's the award. So these events usually go to like this, there is different events per day and they go to like seven or eight if you stay for everything. The main talks however end at around half past six. Day four, uh, this is by the way the 1650 University of Vienna and uh, yesterday was mostly at the poster sessions and then there was some sort of AI in future war dystopian regulation-ish kind of talk a little bit glim girl smiling at me and hurt with way of starting the day so oh, the nice thing is that this conference is directly next to this uh, alley. So actually a fairly big uh, green part of Vienna, and so I don't have to go to the to the toilets in the lunch break. I can just you know, piss in the woods, much more comfy and clean.
So at a high level, if we take a look at the policy optimization uh, in the theoretical linear MDP uh, setup, the calculus one, we can see that the Hoffman value is indeed s equal to the ground truth ratio of dy over dx. And then we can also visualize it, and it forms this nice looking curve, which is both convex and has this log barrier property, which uh, precludes the possibility of any uh, degenerate probability ratio estimation, which are like less than zero. Uh, the hard part of this minimization is that if we like write out the second term, this second term here is actually so day number four, I think, I, it's hard to count because it started on Sunday, so my, my calculations are a little bit off, potentially. Um, I went to physics talks, uh, I went to physics talks, um, 15 minute talks, most of them on like solving differential equations, P-I-N-N, physics informed neural networks uh, constraints and using neural networks for that and you know representing the solution of differential equation as a neural network and uh, and there was also one talk about magnetic fusion like uh, you know fusion reactor stuff tokamak stuff and how machine learning can help uh, I might put some links in the show notes. It was a position paper with like six recommendations on how you can contribute with machine learning in this field. And he, this guy, this young guy, was fairly optimistic that he said fusion will be solved in his generation. Uh, I, he was at a poster session, but there were so many people I couldn't really talk to him. I would like to know if he has a good case for that. So that's the morning, now I'm on my way to some lunch. This is our company product. Looks uh, fancy.